Welcome to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. I'm Beth Cooper. I am Stacy Earlywine, and we are glad to be with you for another fine episode yes. of By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Yeah, we love talking to you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's great. We always say it's a great episode, but it, this one's interesting. <laughs> it is, because uh-huh. it's something that I really don't know much about. I didn't I mean. know much about it either until mm-hmm. I started reading, and it's yeah, pretty you, cool. You just get to look at it, stuff. I'm like, that uh-huh. might be a fun story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. definitely. So today, <laughs> should we tell them? Yeah, let's just go ahead and go ahead and throw it out there. So today we're talking about duels, the duels in history, and and we're not and, talking Batman and Robin. Nope. No. <laughs> we're we're talking, not talking Smokey and the Bandit. No. No, we're talking <laughs> history of duels, duels in Clay County and and the state. Not duos, duels, duels. Papow, papow, or. Before Papau was Swartz. Oh, I... <laughs> Sword fighting duels. No kidding. We'll I get just, into that later. Yeah, I don't. You read this and it's like, well, ma'am, I disagree with you. I shall kill you. Well, okay. You go walk back by 15 steps off of this way and we will shoot at each other. That'll decide the argument, obviously. I mean, one of us will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> It's a man thing. I guess. Women would have just sit down yeah. and be like. I didn't find one duel between uh, well, women. but No, no actually, be- there was one online that was, but I think they were like, oh, gosh, I want to say they were like put up to it. Like the men were behind them saying, you guys need to do this. You guys need to duke this out with your uh-huh. guns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just mm-hmm. didn't. I don't. Mm-hmm. It is funny, though, when you. Yeah, yeah. And get into but it. unless you're the rich man, and if you're a rich man, and you have an argument. It's like I'm going to challenge you to a duel. Hey, peasant, get over here and shoot that guy for me. <laughs> yeah, they did do that. <laughs> I'm going to stand over here drinking my tea, win that duel for me. Yeah, and they all had seconds. Like you be my second. So like that is if the one thing happens and I can't do it. You will be the one to do it for me. You never want to be an understudy. How hmm. funny. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's it's going to be a fun show. Okay, let's talk about our ad. Let's we, talk about our ad. Stacy and I always talk about history. We always talk about old things, nostalgic things. And we always start our show with an old ad from an old magazine. Yeah. What you got? Well, and this is uh, a Time magazine ad. And like I said uh, in a previous episode, I would never just pick up a Time magazine. Uh-huh. Woo! Yeah. There, there, there we go. There we go. Time magazine. May 14th, 1945, uh, it was 15 cents. So, like, really, uh, of all the magazines we've picked up, I mean, it's more expensive. Most of them run, like, 5, 10 cents. Uh-huh. This one's 15 cents. And, of course, yeah. this is right. Uh, World War II is going on. And it's got, like, the big three up there. You've got the somebody holding the American flag, uh, Great Britain, and China. Kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many how many pictures have you ever seen those three flags? If that's China's flag, why didn't they make a Chinese man holding it? <laughs> I was thinking, holy cow, we think of so much. I was thinking the same thing. Well, I don't know, sure, but that's that, China's it flag, is right? China's flag. Yeah. So. The USSR flag. What? USSR? It might be USSR. Okay. Like Russia? Yeah. I'm back in the USSR. That was a good that song. That was good. Love the Beatles. Okay. I don't well, know. Well, you may have can, to. He can look that up. Let's talk about the ad. Which okay. one are we talking about? Well, you know, and, and this ad is like lot, mostly alcohol. Mm. Alcohol and that type of thing. Yes. The magazine is really, I mean, it's really a neat magazine. Um, it's got a lot of old planes and stuff in it, but yet there's also a lot about the Holocaust, which is very difficult for me to talk about. But it is history, and guess what? You can't change. History. You cannot change history no matter how much it hurts your feelings or no matter how much you may want to. You can't change mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah. But I thought this was cute. Okay. Okay. So this is a Campbell's so, soup. Oh, no. What are they making now? Scotch broth. Oh, my. Scotch. Scotch broth. Oh, Highland fling. Do you not love that little fella up there? Uh, how cute is he? Yeah. So it's like, once again, because I said the magazine is all like, it's mainly like cigarettes and alcohol. And I came, I'm like, Campbell's soup. That seems weird. It says they call it broth, but moan alive. Tis hearty soup on which to thrive. What's going on with his knees? It looks like he has Batman drawn on his knees. (laughs) 
I don't know. I think they're just a little boy's bruised knees. Okay. Here's a Highland fling of good eating, a hearty soup of meat and vegetables. Who says that you have to fix and fuss and get the whole kitchen heated up to produce a main dish all the family will be sure to like? Maybe that person hasn't heard about Campbell's Scotch broth. Have you? Flavorful, well. nourishing meat stock, brimming with garden vegetables, good barley, and tender pieces of mutton. 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 Isn't that lamb? Uh, you remember we talked about mutton in the Orchardville City Cookbook. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's Campbell's Scotch Broth. It has the homey taste to win you instantly and the heartiness to let you know that the going will be good till the next meal. Plan to build lots of summer lunches and suppers around this delicious, satisfying soup. Summer? That's what it said. So it doesn't have scotch in it, like scotch. Uh, the apparently, liquor. Campbell's Scotch broth. Look for the red and white label. It's just a kind of a Scottish recipe. Mm -hmm. Scotch. Um, scotch. Okay, first of all, it sounds gross. And second of all, that's not still sold. I have never seen that on the Campbell's soup, soup aisle at Walmart. Oh, time. <laughs> do they Can, still, do you sell still sell scotch Can broth? broth? By Campbell's. I'm guessing, By that's, Campbell's. I'm guessing that's one that did not continue. Well, they have a lot of soup, but that one. I love, I love soup. I, I, I could eat soup all the time. What's your favorite Campbell's soup? P cream of potato. Cream of potato. Uh huh. That's my favorite what? one to just eat out of the can. Really? Uh huh. With and you add milk to oh, it. Oh yeah. Stir it up. It's good potato soup. Tomato soup all that. the way. Tomato oh. soup, grilled cheese sandwiches. I'm telling you, there's nothing better. When I would yeah. come home and my mom was cooking tomato soup for us, it was like the best day ever. Oh really? Oh, no, I love, love me a grilled cheese, but never ever did really? I eat tomato soup. I don't think I've ever, you know, ate. I don't think I had ever eaten the t potato soup from Campbell's. Okay. Huh. Well, you need to try it. Not Campbell's, but Heinz. Heinz, Heinz. makes the scotch broth. Okay. So for those of you that were <laughs> listening to us discuss that old ad and you thought, mm, man, alive. More alive. That need, sounds good. I need me I, some scotch broth today. Where can I buy my mutton soup? <laughs> well, look for it. Heinz, Heinz makes I'm it. I'm not so sure I won't go look for it. I wonder if it, I don't you know. You're going to try it? You're going to try it? You can have a little soup. No, I'll make it and make Jim eat it. Oh, okay. And see what he does. So say, you can make a little soup bar at home and do the potato oh. soup and the, the scotch broth. And what other good ones could we throw in there? I don't know. My, my favorite soups are uh, cream of broccoli. Love that. Uh, oh, Especially I love with some like, nice French bread to dip it cheese. in. Broccoli cheese. Oh, there ain't nothing. Broccoli and cheese broccoli soup. Broccoli cheese soup's um, my favorite. Vegetable soup is one of my yep. favorites. Argument is chili soup. Um, I think it's a soup. I think it's a soup, but why that's, would, that's why, an argument. Why wouldn't it be a soup? Well, it depends. I'm a, a cracker fiend. Yeah. I, I, yeah, my soups all end up pasty because I love crackers. But no, that's an argument out there. Some people say chili's not a soup. Some people say chili is. I say it's chili soup. I don't, do you, yeah. I don't think the word soup needs to be attached to it. But yes, it, it is a type of soup. Yeah. But you can don't have to call it chili soup. I like I always taco like, soup too. I like taco soup. We made that this week because it was a little chilly here in Clay County this mm -hmm. week, and um, it was kind of soup weather, even though it's June. It's we, so weird. I know. We we had taco soup, and everyone thought it was perfect weather for it. You know, I'm that weird person though that I'll make chili in the dead of summer. Yeah, I love chili. You and are I like that tacos. Weird yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Uh, She's I, not. She's I, not teasing. <laughs> I like chili too. I I do love chili. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, Man, yeah. that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might have some soup for lunch. <laughs> when we were in Ireland, the soup was all pureed, and I'm thinking I'm not oh. gonna like this. So oh my gosh, I had good. the best tomato soup in Ireland I ever had in my uh -huh. life. Yeah, that was pureed. Now, I ate soup literally everywhere we went. Uh huh. That does sound good. Oh boy, it was good. Yeah. But you know what else is not good? What? Duels. Duels. <laughs> Duels. Duels. Soup, Soup good. good. Duels, Duels no. <laughs> oh, we think alike. Soup good. Duels bad. Okay. Golly gee. Let's, well, let, let's I'm jump gonna, in to duels. I, I'm going to let you start this one. Okay. Let's, you, you start let's, this one. Let's get on the same page. All right. Let's start talking about Henry Clay. Okay. Henry he is the Clay. reason that Clay County, Illinois is named Clay County. He... 
He was the man um, he that uh, we named Clay County after, and not because our soil is very much like clay, because it is, it and is. I always thought that as a kid, that's why. Me too. Um, Interesting. It is not. It is, it's because Henry Clay. So Henry Clay was the man that did the Missouri Compromise prior to mm. the Civil War. Um, he was in Virginia, and although dueling was illegal in Virginia, the Secretary of State, Henry Clay, challenged U.S. Senator John Randolph of Roanoke, and Clay called Randolph out to defend his honor after Randolph insulted him ha. in a speech on the Senate floor. Okay, well, time out. We insult, I mean, our Senate floor today <laughs> is like, imagine? <laughs> can you imagine if today's politicians were like, every time no. they got insulted, they're like, he insulted me. I am going to call him out and defend my honor. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so Randolph then um, confided to another senator, Thomas Hart Bitten of Missouri, that he had no intention of hurting Clay, who was married and had a child. So Henry Clay was married. Hmm. He had a kid. This other guy was like, he challenged me to a duel. I'm not going to hurt him. He's married. He's got a kid. This is He's probably telling his wife, like, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the duel did take place on April the 8th of 1826, mm. um, half a mile north of Pimmet Run. I don't know where that is. I'm assuming in Virginia. Both first shots missed their intended targets. Okay, Clay's second shot also missed, <laughs> and Randolph <laughs> raised his pistol and fired it in the air. The okay. duel then ended, and the unhurt adversaries met each other halfway and shook hands. What in the I, world? Why? I, I, what was I, the point of all that? They I purposely missed each other. The The second shot from the other guy, he fired in the air, which is something we can talk about later when we talk about another famous duel. Um, but that was, that was common. They didn't actually, apparently, these two didn't want to kill each other. Uh, but they had to do this in order to defend their honor. This is I, like, See, I don't understand it at all. I don't understand it either. See, because Henry Clay, I have another one on Henry Clay, too. He was, he did duels more than once. Oh, yeah, he did many duels. He was nuts. It was mm -hmm. like Henry Clay, the well-known American statesman, fought a few duels in his time and had even been wounded in one by his political opponent, Humphrey Marshall. The affair only added to his popularity. Oh, well, there's the answer. It, Why did he do it? Because people liked it I'm and he got, more, cool. he got more popular. He was like... <laughs> Nice to meet you. I'm Henry Clay. Have you heard about my duels? <laughs> I mean, it, it's odd. He was probably in the newspaper a lot. He, in this picture, did you put a, did you send a picture of Henry Clay? Yep, we have one. Uh, Ty, I believe. Let me see this picture. Yeah. Kapow! Well, somebody's not doing very good. That guy's <laughs> shooting behind his head. Yeah, he's shooting in the air. That's Randolph. So oh. he's the one that his his second shot went into the air, and then this other one is, is Henry Clay there on the left of your screen. He, How Henry, funny. both of his shots missed. And I mean, okay, so how, how I wonder, which we're going to breed a lot more and we're going to do more interesting mm -hmm. facts. But, oh, we need to take a commercial break. Oh, gosh, that, wow, went, that fast. went fast. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be after right this. back. <laughs> At your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville, you can count on experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. More than just your car, the Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville carry a large inventory of Napa products for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced associates understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa know-how at your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. We like technology at Flora Savings Bank. Here's what you can accomplish in our mobile banking app in less than 30 seconds. See account balances in your transactions, set up an account alert, make a transfer between accounts, get an alert text message about your transfer, pay a bill, turn your debit card off and then back on. It all happens in the palm of your hand with our free My Bank To Go app. Search My Bank To Go in the App Store or Google Play and give mobile banking a try. Flora Savings Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender.
remember. Doors, paint, windows, electrical, plumbing, and much more. Oh yeah, give me all your guns too. John Lucas. What? You better be dreaming about all the stuff we sell here at Zinc Building Center. Oh, I would. Zinc Building Center in Louisville on Route 45. It's a cool place. Okay. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. I am Beth Cooper. I am Stacy Early Wine, and we are talking about duels. So we said that <laughs> dually. Dually. Yes. Okay. I don't know if that's the right <laughs> way to use that word, but <laughs> you're so, the English. Please. I know. Okay. So, so real quick, though, to go back about the um, Time Magazine at the beginning of the episode, we we're talking about the ad. That is the Russian flag, mm? not the Chinese flag. So not we got Chinese that cleared flag. away. Okay. We're good on We're that. We're good on that. So we just finished talking about Henry Clay and his duels. And um, he's the reason that our Clay County was named Clay County. But, you know, there was actually a duel right here in Clay County. Mm-hmm. And it w involved a man named Willis Osborne. Oh, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> this was way back in 1825. So before, so Flora was founded in 1854. If that gives you some context, yep. this is around the time where Oskaloosa and things like that were happening. Um, but um, Clay County was happening, but Flora was not a town yet. And Willis Osborne was a very high ranking citizen yes. of Clay County. I'm going to go through everything Please that he do. was. Please so, do. Okay. Goodness. So, um, he was in our and there's a book out there called clay county history about these early years and he he was a big name in there so in january of 1825 he came along and he was appointed to the office of clerk of the commissioner's court so basically he's the county clerk okay mm -hmm. um by april of that year he also became the county treasurer and the justice of peace okay so now he's got three titles he's he's justice of peace he's um the treasurer and he's the county clerk. All of these things. At we're the talking same time. high, which, high job. We're which talking. Which I realize that there, you know, back in 1825, <clears throat> it's not like we had the population that we did now. But, but also, still. there were communities that had a lot of population, and there mm -hmm. was a lot going on because there wasn't as many laws, so it kept him busy because he had to enforce yeah. everything. Yeah. Okay, so that was by April. By June of 1825, so just a few months down the road. He also became our tax collector Boo. and our county <laughs> recorder. So seriously, he's so doing he had, all of them. He had five jobs for the county. Mm. I wonder if he got five salaries. Let's look that. Let's see. Mm. If, okay. Uh, well, well, back then probably not. Yeah. So. Today he'd be getting that, and so would okay. everybody that came after him. So <laughs> just think, he would have been a very busy guy. Okay. So. Um, at the same time, there was a man named James Waddles, and he was the seated judge um, in the in the Clay County Court. And um, around that time, Willis Osborne filed for divorce from his wife named Rachel. Yes, and you know, and it wasn't like people just didn't get divorced. No. That, yeah, I mean, you're talking. And it says it was granted yeah. through default. And see, through default. So what did what did that? What okay. do you think that that meant? I'm wondering. D default is that kind of like like an annulment? What it, what does that mean? Default. I, I don't know. It was granted through default. Granted through default. And Osborne was now a free, free man. man. Oh, Good Lord, it makes it sounds like he was in prison. Yeah. He got a divorce. She was probably a free woman. Yeah. <laughs> But um, he was a free man, not for long, because no. uh, by November he was married to Rodisa oh, Lacey. Okay, so, so that was pretty fast. I bet there, that was old the boy. default. Yeah, I bet you anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I there's bet, scandal here. There's scandal here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Rodisia, I think was maybe. Now see the Waddle's girlfriend. name, I recognize, and the Osborne. Mm -hmm. But Lacey, the last name Lacey in our county, mm -hmm. well, Rodessa D. Lacey. This well, might be something we need to look up. She might, What? well, I'm not going to say too much in case her descendants are watching, but I mean, it's possible she worked at a saloon or something like that mm -hmm. and he fell in love with her. Okay, that's just that's, all. This that's, is not that's a fun. fact. The rest of that, this is fact. <laughs> that's just that's, that's me wondering. That's okay. our pondering in our that's, head. Okay, let's get back to the facts. Okay, Jack. facts, facts, facts. Okay. In April of 1826, uh, Mr. Osborne, the tax collector, treasurer, county recorder, justice of the peace, county clerk, all of these, had <laughs> charges filed against him. 
even though he's the one that has to file the charges, he probably had to file them against himself for sending the challenge to fight a duel. So right. it was against the law to fight a duel. But okay. he challenged someone anyway. And um, it says enough was enough for Willis Osborne and his new wife. So he, he challenged someone to fight a duel. And they, uh, I don't know if they're the ones that, that declined. The duel was actually, I don't think, ever ever fought. It, it doesn't. And kinda... him and his wife were just so put out by the actions <laughs> of whoever this was that he resigned his offices on July the 8th, 1826. 1826. He started this in 1825. So this man, the, there's there. We have got to do a story on this Osborne. Well, I didn't find a whole lot more other than this. Like he he appeared and he did all of these things. Yeah, he like went for the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. And then exile. Then he got mad. Yeah, like a little baby. He stormed off into the night and was never heard from again. He appears never again in the pages of history. Wayne like Ca- County history for sure, but no, he went to he Wayne went County. To, yeah, but then it says he does not appear in no any more. more history ever. So what did he do? Yeah, that's interesting because we're talking. This man had serious political gain. Yeah, he did everything. Yeah, and that, my book says exile. He went into exile. Yeah, in Wayne County. And you know what? I kind of wonder what happened. Is if, if he stormed off, he got mad, he went to regroup somewhere else, and and, and then he probably died. I mean, they all died young. Yeah. He might have had something wrong with him and hmm. got sick and died. I don't know. Because it is odd for a man like that to never yeah. appear again. And, and as fast, like we're talking every other month, he was doing something and different. And he obviously was intelligent. <clears throat> yeah. Because he was able to do these jobs. Yeah. It makes you wonder mm-hmm. about that first wife, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would like to hear her side of, of the story. Rachel. Rachel Osborne. Mm-hmm. What really what, happened? Yeah, and I wonder what her maiden name was. I don't know. That might be something we need to write down, too. Rachel Osborne. Well, our next episode on women, when we do another <laughs> one of those, we'll try to find her We story. want to find her. Now, yeah. there's another one we need to discuss that people are going to recognize the name. That's Alexander Ham- Hamilton and Aaron Burr. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows this story. Alexander. So. But it's kind of it's kind of a sad because, you know. It is sad. You want to take it away? Yeah. I wish my daughter Malia was here because she is, she's read all the books on Hamilton. Yeah. She knows all about the whole thing. And Now let's, when you mentioned Hamilton, are we talking yes. the Hamilton that people will recognize yes. from the $10 bill? The $10 he's bill. The $10 mm-hmm. bill. Yep. He's, he's the one the musical is written about Hamilton yep, that you attended mm-hmm. with me. Yep. It was good. Um, we listened to the music from Hamilton daily in my car. Mm-hmm. Um, my kids, all three of my kids love the musicals. Um, Alexander Hamilton was a high ranking U.S. official and he was killed in a pistol duel by mm-hmm. Aaron Burr, Burr. sir. <laughs> yeah. I can't say it without adding this. Aaron stuff. Burr, um, sir. Yeah. And Aaron Burr was the vice president of the United States. It's, I, I can't even uh-huh. comprehend it. This happened in 1804. Can you even comprehend it? No. No, I so can't. I don't get it. Yeah, it made a martyr out of Hamilton and a scoundrel out of Burr. Yeah. Um, so Hamilton did not intend to fire. So Hamilton always said, um, you know, when you're in a duel, you just fire in the air, and that's the right thing to do. And I guess he assumed that Aaron Burr was also going to do that. Aaron Burr did not no. do that um, because uh, Hamilton was hit by Burr's bullet, um, and he died. Um, hmm. so the funny thing, no, it's not funny. This even sadder thing about when I say funny, a lot of times, I mean, interesting, I, need I to say, change my yeah, words, we the need interesting to, thing. We say funny a lot. I think maybe that's a Clay County yeah. thing too. Like it must be. Oh, well, that's wrong, funny. Wrong interesting. I interesting. Mean, yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. Intriguing part mm-hmm. of the story is mm-hmm. that Aaron, not Aaron Burr, Alexander Hamilton's son was killed in a duel. Mm-hmm just a few months before Alexander Hamilton was killed in a duel. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, you missed that part of the musical? I missed that part of the musical. (laughs) Yeah, he did. It was just a short little blip in there, but like his son. It's coming um, back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I I might remember that. And and the reason that he died, I'm pretty sure, those of you that are more familiar with the story can correct me on this, um, is I think Alexander told him, hey, son, make sure you fire into the air. So let me get this straight. 
before we go to commercial break. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that Hamilton, it wasn't going to be this. I mean, he was thinking duels like, what's the purpose? Who? How do you know who won? If you're just shooting your bullets in the air. I think it's kind of like that other one with Henry Clay where we talked about where no one gets shot. They shake hands after it and they're like, oh, great. It's all settled now. But who won? Whoever shoots first? I don't know that. I don't know that there's a winner. It's just neither person. shoots in the air is the winner because they're more manly. Oh, okay. So, okay. So in case you couldn't hear all that, like uh, Ty was just saying that whoever shoots in the air is considered the more manly one. So they're, and they're considered the winner. But if you're shooting the end, the other guy shoots you in the heart. Like how I'm sorry, but if you're the has, dead winner, <laughs> if somebody has their gun pointed at me, I don't know that I could take my bullet, my one bullet, and shoot in the air knowing that they're about to kill me. Yeah, but it's you're, all so foreign to me. I just don't understand the whole point of it. I don't understand. Well, it's foreign because it's French. <laughs> yeah, the French came up with it. it the is, French came up with yeah, that. Yeah, it was the French yeah. came up with it. It was called Codulo. Codulo was no doubt introduced by the French, who were the first Europeans to colonize Illinois. Which I didn't realize that. I didn't mm-hmm. realize the French were the first to colonize. Yes, us. I only knew that because when I was a kid at uh, Harrisburg Schools, we had to take field trips to Fort Discharge, Discharge or something like that. Yeah, That's how they say it. I think the French. I think it's mm-hmm. hard to Fort read. Massac too. But. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but that is kind of interesting. I'm glad Ty told us that because I don't understand. But chances yeah. are, I guess maybe you're just the luck of the Irish, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to shoot in the air, hope this guy misses me. But it would also depend on how far away you were Yeah, from each other. Mm-hmm. But yeah. we've got some that um, they didn't, uh, we, and we're going to take a commercial break here shortly. But uh, and I wonder, like I said, it goes back a long, long, long way. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. almost like I've never understood, like, when you watch things about war. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a gentleman's war. Mm-hmm. I've never understood this. Mind. It's mm-hmm. got to be that same type of mindset. Yeah. You know, like back mm-hmm. when, you know, when the when the English was taking over the Scots and the Irish and all uh-huh. that stuff and just slaughtering people. Well, well, it's a gentleman's war. Yeah. And um, they well, would. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. And before there were these pistol duels, there's there's a lot of pictures online and stuff when I was doing this research. It, it was swords. Yeah, I mean, people have been doing these duels for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I can't imagine waking up that morning and being like, "Okay, today's the day I'm going to duel." Yeah, I'm going to maybe die here in a little bit. But yeah. uh, but we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with okay. more duels of Illinois. If you're looking for a loan for your brand new home, go Clay County State Bank. If you want to transfer money so your future will look sunny, go Clay County State Bank. Check it and save it and feel paid to And all in bank and just ask a fee For all your banking needs, we think you will agree Clay County State Bank is the place you need to be Clay County State Bank At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Play City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. It's the weekend, and your symptoms are worsening. The morning of a big meeting and you have a bigger sore throat. Ever experience that urgency after picking up your sick child and your community health center has already closed? You will be able to connect to a provider at crhpc.org. Even if you have never been to CRHPC, you are welcome to utilize our services. Feel better after scheduling a video visit with CRHPC. Tomorrow. Some fear the uncertainty it brings. Some trust the promise it holds. At Grinnell Mutual, we are always looking forward to tomorrow, growing and innovating. So even if the plans you have for the future aren't the same as the plans that the future holds for you, you can be ready. Because we'll be ready, like we have been for over 100 years. Trust in that. Trust in tomorrow. Talk to your mutual agent today. Your local agent is on the square. Louisville, Clay County, Farmers Mutual Insurance. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Today we're talking about duels. Woohoo! 
Woohoo! Crazy. They don't make any sense at all to me, but they that, happened. They did happen. They were happening all all around us, in Clay County and all over Illinois, and and our handy dandy man in the back room, Ty. Yes. Just explained to us what a divorce by default was. He did. And it is basically he filed for divorce, and the wife didn't contest anything, and then a judge is brought in and says, "Yep, you're divorced." Okay. So he wanted it. He got it. She apparently wanted it, too. She must have wanted it, too. There's a scandal there. Yeah. She didn't say anything. She kept her mouth shut and was like, please yeah. take this man away from me. Well, let's continue. We okay. got a lot of duels to talk about here. Okay. So before Illinois became a state, it was known as the Illinois Territory. Mm -hmm. And the two men who were involved in the next duel we are going to talk about is Rice Jones, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, they're all prominent. They're all politicians. They're all they're politicians. Way, you don't hear about Joe Blow the farmer taking a duel <laughs> against, you know, his his other farmer no. that lives down the street. That, it's insane. It's all these, like, politicians and attorneys and stuff. Yeah. And it's like the I don't higher get it. ups. I mean, I probably, I'm sorry, probably because the farmers had, like, common sense. They have more sense. And these guys were probably... I don't know. <laughs> Politicians. I don't know. <laughs> well, it was okay. between Rice Jones, a lawyer, and Shadrach Bond, who was later to be the first governor of Illinois. Can we just talk about both of their first names for a hot I'm second? I'm loving them. Um, Shadrach, love it. I love Rice. Rice. I love Rice. Rice. I like it, cool too. Name. I was going to mention that, too. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. The encounter took place on an island in the Mississippi River north of Kaskaskia. Okay. Um, the weapons were hair triggered, and Jones's pistol was accidentally discharged in the air. Okay, so that meant it was a pretty hot pistol. It was Barely a pretty hot pistol. It. This caused a violent argument between Ooh. the two men. Bond's representative claimed since Jones had fired his shot, it was now Bond's turn to take aim and fire. Ooh, so his gun went off accidentally. And now it's so like. So then he just gets to stand there and be like, take your best shot. <laughs> Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. Fire away. Hit me with your best shot. That that fire takes a whole away. new that takes a whole new uh, message to that uh, song. song. Yes. Bond refused this. This Good is man. great. Bond refused this and he and Jones shook hands and departed. Well, praise the Lord. I mean, For that man did Lord. have some sense. I mean, he because did. how could you do that and then think that you're not a murderer? Yeah. But what's sad, so, okay, Rice Jones, lawyer, his pistol goes off. Shadrach Bond, who is going to be the next governor, of, uh, the first governor of Illinois, is like, you know what? We're done. This is blah, blah, blah. Mm, this but is this stupid. is where it's really sad. Okay. So, Mr. Jones. Mm hmm while talking to a lady on the streets of Kaskaskia, uh -huh. a man slipped up behind him and fatally shot him in the back. Boo. Yeah, his name was Dunlap. Dunlap fled the territory, went to Texas, and was never captured. Okay, and Dunlap uh, had been Bond's second in the duel, so he was his backup man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it all came back to it the duel. It all came they back were still to the mad duel. About that. He was mad. Yeah. And then that is when the Illinois Territory made the law no against law the gets duels. Duly. Mm -hmm. So the two but men, nobody listened to it. But see, the thing about it is, so you had you had a uh, Jones and Bond that were like, "Hey, this is cool, and everything." But then this Dunlap mm -hmm. gets his knickers in a twitch. Still had a, had a, still had vengeance yeah, out mm -hmm. and shot him in the back. Yeah, that's what I don't like. That's about an evil it. man. Yeah, not a fan of his. Yeah, don't like him. Nope. And then he he went to Texas. Goodbye. And was never captured. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy, but he probably got, you know, dip, diptheria. diptheria. What, yeah. is, what is that disease that we talked about? Diptheria? Dip, diptheria? Yeah, he probably that got that and died. So. And then there's another duel. In 1812, a duel was fought between Thomas Rector and Joshua Barton on a, the Bloody Island, located in the river near St. Louis, and in this fight, Barton was killed. The only, that's the only thing I've got about that. What the heck? Why are they doing it on all these islands? Like, let's pick an island in the Mississippi to have our duel. That's you know, strange. That's a really good point. Like, okay. I don't know. And then in Belleville in 1819, there was a duel between Alonzo Stewart and William Bennett, who were to square off with flint talk rifles flint lock flint lock rifles. rifles at 40 yards how do, wonder how they decided how many yards 40 yards like 10 steps i shall take 15 steps and then turn around 
I shall walk 40 yards. What? What? How'd they decide? I, I don't know. What was the... Here we go. Was it against the, uh, you know, how... That's what I was wondering. Is offensive? it severity or how mad you are? Mm-hmm. If you're not very mad, we're going to go from here to here. But if we're really ticked... Yeah. I don't know. But this one kind of has a sad... Uh-huh. Uh, where are we at here? The seconds were Nathan Fike and Jacob Short, who came up with the rounds. No, came up with the idea yeah. to do blank rounds. To blank rounds, Is what yes. my notes say. So they yes. were smart. They said... We're just going to put blanks in their guns. Let them try to shoot Let each other. Let them try. Well, I like but these guys. Blanks. Yeah. Yeah. But to load the rifles with blank rounds, Bennett had been told of the joke, so. but was suspicious of these arrangements mm-hmm. and had managed to slip a rifle ball down the barrel. Yeah. So he so, was on to them. So he yeah. took out the blank and he added an actual rifle ball in. Yeah, they so thought, Fike and Bennett, or Fike and Short, the seconds, were like, let's just fool them. We'll put um, blanks in there. Nobody will die. But oh, no, no. Bennett found out. Mm-hmm. With the blast from Bennett's rifle, Stewart fell with a shot in his chest and soon died from the wound. Boom. He's Boom. dead. But, I mean, the result was the arrest of the three survivors, Fike, Short, and Bennett, which I don't think Fike and Short should have been arrested because it went, they didn't do the wrong thing. Yeah, well, Fike and Short were lucky because they each had a trial and they got off with a hung jury. Right. So they did not, they were not punished. Yeah, they should not have been punished. Yeah, but they were but pretty Bennett, nervous, though. But yeah. what happened to Bennett? Ooh, Bennett w- managed to escape jail and fled to Arkansas. However, he, he was later him. arrested, returned to Belleville, tried for murder, and was hanged. Hanged. They hung him. They hung him. So, like, they made an example out of him. Like, the, the law is you don't do duels and yeah. he was like going to do it anyway did it anyway shot the guy and then ended mm-hmm. up being hanged for it yeah like i said what I, did I this really, accomplish i really felt felt bad for fike and short i kind of felt bad for fike because and like i said they, they were trying to do the right thing they they were probably just in a bad situation and they're the ones that were like let's do blanks well we'll talk okay so like if you've got these high-powered people who are doing duels and you're the second mm-hmm. really I you mean, probably you probably don't say, have a choice. Yeah, you probably can't say I, I, no, no, I don't want to be the second because then they'd mm-hmm. be like, "By golly, I'm offended. I challenge you to a duel." <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I like, bet, yeah. they'd probably be like, huh, "What do you yeah. do?" I mean, you're just stuck. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <sighs> oh okay. my goodness! What we got next? Let's talk about this one. Okay, one of the most violent. Oh no! Was fought on the Mississippi, August twenty seventh, eighteen thirty. This was between Major Thomas, is that Biddle? I think it's Biddle. Biddle, B I D D L E, Mm -hmm. of the U.S. Army and Congressman Spencer Pettis. Pettis, another politician. So, once again, you've got a U.S. Army man and a Congressman Spencer Pettis. The weapons were single shot pistols at a distance 15 feet. 15 feet, so they were even madder. My God. Than the other guys, they were 40 yards. Uh, Yeah. This is 15 feet. 15 feet. Yeah. The commands were one, two, three, fire. Both were fatally wounded and died side by side. And this is the sweet part. They died side by side while holding each other's hands and expressing forgiveness to each other for their fatal disagreement. Shot each other 15 feet apart. I mean, Somebody scooted them closer together. They ha- grab each other's hands. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, buddy. I wish I hadn't done it. Do you forgive me? I forgive you. Do you forgive me? Yes, I forgive you. And then boom, they You died. realize that I think this desk is eight foot. Okay. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So seven more. Literally, this this desk that we're at, there, it's literally, you're here, and I'm just on the other side of oh, that. Oh, yeah. They were very close wow, together. Wow, they were because, close. Okay, so just think. I wow. mean, if you're not real good with measurements, 15 feet, uh, a tall man is six foot tall. So yeah. it would be like two men laying toe to toe along the floor, just a you little, are a little, close. Few, little, a little bit longer than that. But it would that's put that in perspective. You're very yeah. close to each other. Okay. So, yes. Before um, they held each other's hands and expressed forgiveness. Yes. Of each other in their fatal disagreement. I, I wish we knew what they were arguing about. Yeah, I know. All of the, the juicy part is left out of these stories. It really is because it would be it would uh-huh. be neat to. Well, the one it talked about, he had been insulted on the Senate floor. That was in that one story I talked about earlier. Yeah. But um, the others, they don't say. And it makes you think, is it a woman? Is it something well, at work? Is it the job? Is it a law they're trying to pass? Is well, it, you know, what? Most of the time it is over women. Yeah. Most wars are started over women. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like if you think about a lot of the great 
a lot of interesting great wars and mm -hmm. stuff. But uh, even our, you know, and then like we're in the land of Lincoln, we got a, a, mm -hmm. our last duel to talk about here. We'll just touch a little bit about it. But you, like, yeah, it, I'll start it because it's kind of a long hey, wait story. A minute. Oh, yeah, go ahead and what? start. Well, I was going to say, did you have anything on, on like the sword duels? No, I okay. didn't go into that because it was just a lot further back and it wasn't as local. I was trying to keep it to Clay County in Illinois. Okay. All so right. I didn't see yeah, any sword we've duels. Yeah, because we want to talk about our, mm -hmm. our, our great president, Abraham Lincoln, who actually was. Challenge to a duel. Challenge to a duel. I can't even imagine challenging him because his uh -huh. arm span's probably mm -hmm. ten feet long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so this the the writer of this um, these articles on these duels was Harley Bottom. He was a local historian here in Clay County. He's gone now, but um, he wrote this and he said uh, this is an amusing account of a proposed duel <laughs> which involved State Auditor Shields and Abraham Lincoln. This mm. was when Lincoln was quite a bit younger. Yeah. He was not president yet. He was yet. not president yet. Um, Lincoln had made a bitter attack against the state auditor in an, in an issue of the Sangamo Journal. So I believe that to be a um, Springfield area newspaper. Um, Abraham Lincoln had written some stuff about the state auditor. Um, it was related to the methods that he used in collecting taxes. Which right there is... An interesting, uh -huh. and it, yeah, so. And I have a feeling whatever yeah. Abraham Lincoln said was probably pretty spot on. Oh, I um, have a feeling too, yeah. Shields was a kind of a hot-headed sort of chap. Yeah. And the result mm -hmm. was a flurry of correspondence between the two men. So yeah. um, Shields was mad, and he immediately sent off a letter to Abraham Lincoln. How dare you, blah, blah, blah. And Lincoln wrote back and was like, tit, and then tit, and then it kept going. They kept, kept writing going. back and forth. So mm -hmm. finally, Shields hurled the challenge at Lincoln <laughs> for a duel to the death. To the death. This didn't Not, happen, obviously. But can you imagine how what a di uh -uh. Well, how different our entire world would be if Abraham Lincoln had died in a duel at the age of whatever oh, this was? Can you imagine? Early, it was in 1842, so someone that knows his dates can because tell Because literally, his, when you talk about his we all age have, at this time. We all have our favorite presidents, but I would mm -hmm. say Abraham Lincoln's got to be literally uh -huh. probably pretty much everybody's favorite hey ty let me know how how old abraham lincoln was in 1842 please yeah, um crazy. okay so uh shields chose general whiteside as his second and lincoln chose a doctor named dr mary merriman <laughs> um and so this both of their seconds whiteside and mary merriman decided to meet yeah. in secret and they were trying to stifle the feud, trying to, you know, oh, let's put this, this flame down? out. Let's calm it down because we and don't I, need these guys to be doing this. I blame Shields for it because he was the hot yeah. man. I don't see Lincoln nope. being uh, Lincoln, stubborn like Lincoln that. Lincoln yeah. wasn't not being uh, that no. stubborn about it. He didn't really want that much to do with it. But this guy was persistent and Lincoln mm -hmm. didn't want to be he's seen. He's not backing down. He's not going to back down because he's, he's not, not the down. kind of guy that backs down. And he didn't want to be seen as a coward. He was 33. He was so 33. Lincoln was 33 years old at the time of this uh, proposed duel. Um mm -hmm. So, um, before any progress could be made, Lincoln had his choice of weapons. Um, he was sent this message, or Lincoln sent this message. This is what he wanted. Cavalry broadswords of the largest size, such as are now used by the cavalry company at Jacksonville. A, he wanted a plank 10 feet long, 9 to 12 inches long, fixed on edge between Woo! us. Next, a line drawn on the ground on both sides of the plank, parallel with it. At a distance, the length of the swords and three additional feet from the plank. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're just going to talk about how specific our president was. He was a smart man. He was. We'll okay. be right back after this. Do you bowl like this? That's great. Do you bowl like this? That's great, too. That's because whether you're a pro or you just want to have a lot of fun, at Peggle's Silver Dollar Lanes, we have a lane for you. We have Galaxy Bowling, Gaming for Kids and Adults, Joe's Pizza, a full bar, darts, pool, and fresh and clean bowling shoes. Boy, does that smell nice. So come on down to Pagel Silver Dollar Lanes in Effingham, where we have a lane for you. My name is Robin Stanford. I own Stanford Marketing. It's a promotional products business along with an embroidery business. And we do custom hats, t-shirts, anything, you name it, we can make it. People like that we do stuff in-house and we can actually make things here and that we're not contracting the work out to other places. We never say no. We always try to find a way to do it. If anybody can do it, we can do it. We are hardworking women, that is for sure. Come to Stanford Marketing in Florida for all your custom and promotional needs. 
The insurance specialists have options to tailor to your needs at CSI Insurance Brokers. Experienced insurance brokers at CSI are skilled with all types of insurance plans and policies and represent many companies, including Safeco Insurance. You'll benefit from their detailed expertise, unbeatable premiums, and commitment to customer service. CSI Insurance Brokers and Safeco Insurance Company, providing affordable rates on quality insurance since 1952. For over 50 years, at your locally owned and operated Roll King Supply in Salem and Olney, we've helped you and your neighbors enjoy an easy country lifestyle. We carry the most thorough sporting goods department around with a huge variety of hunting and fishing gear, camping equipment, and a variety of firearms for any need. Our team is here to help you find whatever you need. Open every day, it's Roll King in Salem and Olney, your locally owned farm and home store. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Today we are talking about duels. duels. And uh, we are writing the story of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yes, it's very and, interesting. And his proposed duel. So Such a what, smart man. What had happened is hmm. that because Lincoln was the one that was challenged to the duel, he got to pick the weapon. And he picked <laughs> cavalry broadswords, which are big, long. Mm, I can't even. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, of the largest size, he had all of these rec um, requirements. He wanted the plank to be 10 feet long. Um, he wanted certain 9 to 12 inches long on, on the edges. Um, between us, he wanted lines drawn on the ground parallel to the plank and um, at a distance the length of the swords and three additional feet from the plank. So he had really thought out the math on this. Okay? You know, it makes you wonder, where is this sword today? Oh, my gosh. Is it Can in you the Lincoln? imagine? Is it in the Lincoln Museum? Museum? Which I've know. never been to the Lincoln Museum. I haven't either. I need to, we need to go. Yeah, okay. So from this description, you might think that neither opponent could maybe touch each other. That is until you think about the length of Lincoln's arms because he was a tall <laughs> man and he had a long um, a long reach in comparison to shields who was a very short and stubby man yeah shields james shields wouldn't even had it he would even had it so lincoln took no. all of this into account he took it I all mean, into account he was you know super smart and just like okay <laughs> we're gonna do it we're gonna do it my way and you're gonna be over there with your little arm and i'm gonna yeah, be yeah. like yeah it's literally okay. like somebody f battling a t-rex yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, this story goes on to say, finally, finally, the dueling party did start to cross the river when peace was agreed to, much to the relief of Abraham Lincoln, whose wedding date had been set for November yeah, 4th of that sure year. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure she might have taken him out uh -huh. herself. Yeah. But, okay, crossing the river. Yeah. I, I just, I mean, I am, like, seeing them, I mean... Do you, if you close uh -huh. your eyes, like cross, we're like one on one side of the Mississippi, don't one on the other. Uh -huh. And they're just, I don't know, it's I don't crazy. Know. But it says peace failed to hold between William Butler, a friend of Lincoln's, who wanted to see Shields done in, in yeah. a fight. So Lincoln had a friend named Butler. He was still mad about the whole thing. He's like, I realize your duel didn't happen. That Shields is a total piece of work. Yeah, we're done. And I'm done with him and I want to see him done in. So letters to the editor were written again in the Sangamo Journal. Real and quick though, let's uh -huh. just talk. James Shields was a Civil War officer. Oh, he was. He was okay. a Civil War officer. So which was he a Union or Confederate? Would he have had to been a Union soldier? I would think since he, he was, was up here. His, but yeah, he know. was he was a Civil War officer. Okay. Too. He went on to become one. Yeah, then, he became, because this is all happening yeah. in 1842. Yeah, so he, prior he went to on the to war. be a Civil War officer. Okay, all right. So um, Lincoln's friend Shields, uh, or uh, yeah, Lincoln's friend Butler wanted but, to see Shields done in, and um, they actually challenged each other to another duel, and it was <laughs> to be one mile north of the state house. Um, Oh, boy. So I wonder at the time was the state house in Springfield? I think it probably was. It would have been in Springfield, uh, I think. Yeah, because it's Sangamon County. Sangamon. Uh, okay, Journal. Sangamon County. Okay. Um, so this time they decided to use rifles and they were going to fire at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Um, but then an argument erupted over the seconds between the details and the rules and uh, because of the code duolo and it being an Illinois law that no duels, blah, 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 they decided to cancel it. Yep. Yeah. So I love the rules the of the code duello. Uh huh. There are rules to every yeah possible murder. Yeah, <laughs> there were rules, and they and then the, because of the law, they decided not to do it. But 
that wasn't the end of it. Oh, we're not done. The ugly head of vengeance raised up and a violent argument erupted between Merriman and Whiteside. So, okay, Merriman and Whiteside were the first in Lincoln's duel. Those were the seconds on each side. Lincoln's second was Merriman. He was a doctor. And um, and then Shields' second was Whiteside. Um, but... It was finally, it was Lincoln who carried the challenge letter from Merriman to Whiteside and the usual flurry of insults to and fro followed. <laughs> so Lincoln was actually still involved in that he one. Was still he was still going, like, yeah. Oh, you want to challenge him to a duel? Well, here Write we the go. Letter. I'll take Write it to the him. letter. I'll deliver it personally. Yeah. And he did. So by now, the editors of the local newspapers had taken up the pen and begin to cast ridicule at all of the participants. So the newspaper is starting to make fun of them. Right. And the affair had dragged on well past Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd's wedding day and probably did much to dampen an otherwise happy honeymoon. So Mary kind of, Todd was probably like, That was seriously? probably the beginning of her, like, issues and, like, <laughs> unhappiness. She had more going on, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, the problem with dueling carried on well into the 1850s. That's nuts. Um, two state representatives, O.C. Pratt and Thomas Campbell, had squared off. But friends managed to have peace declared. Mm -hmm. And as late as 1856, General James Lang of Kansas challenged Senator Stephen Douglas to the field of honor. Now, Stephen hmm. Douglas, Stephen Douglas. the great debates, he was the one that debated um, Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that one never came to pass either. So these men, all of these men in po it's, Illinois politics were constantly challenging yeah. each other to duels. Half the time it happened, half the time it didn't. Um, but it was not until just before the Civil War that these duels were finally just discontinued. And it was mostly because of the ridicule and the disgrace that the newspapers were writing about them. Well, I'm glad so, the newspapers yeah, got involved. Yeah, for once it was for a good once thing. it was the a good thing. The newspapers yeah. were writing bad press, and nobody wants bad press, no. especially a politician. No, and uh, which back in one of the first duels we were talking about, it like made him popular. Yeah, Henry Clay. Yeah, it made him popular. But now mm -hmm. people like thinking sooner or later people have got to be thinking, well, this is the dumbest uh -huh. thing I've ever seen. Yeah, and the Henry Clay one that was in 1826, so that was yeah several um, you know yeah. It, it Two, was three decades prior. Yeah, um, the Henry Clay one was after the Hamilton one. So he probably thought mm -hmm. um, Alexander Hamilton was a pretty cool guy. Sure. So then he, maybe that influenced his reason yeah, for calling Yeah, because this one. one's in 40. But these yeah. Illinois ones, these were a lot these later. Were in this was towards the yeah. end. Um, wow. Yeah. So um, the, the newspapers and the general public, too, it says. The general public had kind of had it. Mm. And they were reading these, these stories and, and, like and, why why is our potential president doing this or why is our yeah. senator doing this and why would you want to kill somebody else and how is this not murder and and it's know? usually over over we don't even really know what mm -hmm. they're all over but chances are it's really over stupid stuff oh yeah i would say women more women and money uh-huh Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting. Money. The shields, the tax collector, what he was like. Mm -hmm. He must have been a pretty horrible person. Yeah, because it said his tactics. His tactics for how he collected. He was the probably taxes. shaking people down. Yeah, he probably was seeing him yeah. on the street and being like, "Hey, you owe me." Yeah, you give owe, it over you owe money and stuff. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. That was that was a fun. Yeah, that was a uh, fun. Uh, something I didn't really know a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew a little bit, but not uh, not all of that. And I didn't really ever give a lot of consideration to something like that happening in, in happening in Clay County. No, you, you yeah, no, you really don't. I don't mm -hmm. even really. I I would have never even really thought it would happen on our soil here in the states. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it I didn't know did. Abraham Lincoln had that side to him. Yeah, not that he's the one that. The challenge, yeah. but he was still, he kind of was right there in all that drama yeah, he between was three different duels. Yeah. But you know, one thing about Lincoln, he's not backing down. I mean, mm -mm. he's not backing down. When you're right, you're right. Right. That's probably the type of person. What a fascinating man though. Oh yeah. He was a fascinating. Yeah. He's a pretty cool dude. I love, I can, I, I like to read a lot. I love history. Mm -hmm. I like um, European history. I like matriarchs. I like kings and mm -hmm. queens. I love all that. I love Ireland and Scotland, I love all that stuff, but uh, uh -huh. but uh, yeah, Lincoln's one of those fascinating things. Whenever you sit down to start reading a book about Lincoln, mm -hmm. it's hard, to, it's hard to get away from it. Yeah, yeah, he was very interesting. His old, his wife was too. Yeah, 
Yeah, she has got some interesting background to mm-hmm. her. And it makes you wonder, like, so, uh, like, you're at home and you're just waiting for your husband to come home. He's like, excuse me, honey, but in the morning at 6 a.m., when you know, when the rooster crows, uh-huh. I'm going to be dueling, so I don't know about lunch. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about that aspect for a minute. Like, if you were the wife of a duelist, like, what would your reaction be? Really? Again? Well, yeah. I only kill one chicken today because chances are you won't be here. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I can imagine the wives were just very distraught because, you know, if you didn't have a husband back then, you, you were in trouble. I right. Mean, oh, yeah. You That was, they made the living. Yeah. I mean, you would also have no money, most likely. Yeah. It, I mean, it is, I don't know. But, I, yeah, you, would, you definitely wouldn't want your husband to be a, a dueler. Mm-mm. Or worse, I don't know. I don't think I'd want my husband to be the second. No, I wouldn't want any involvement in that at all. That just all kind of comes back to like your lifestyle. Like sometimes it's good to just lay low, have a quiet lifestyle. Don't be involved in Mm -hmm. like, I would never want to be like involved in like Hollywood or any of those people that constantly have all these Mm -hmm. dramas Mm -hmm. and things going on in in the public eye. Oh yeah. I don't think Mm -hmm. we we can really, we can't really relate to it. Mm -mm. You know, and when I think whenever you're, you know, when you get thrown into that lifestyle, it just, Mm -hmm. it can just, it's a whirlwind. Yeah. It can get you into trouble. Yeah. These wives are probably like, don't, don't go become a politician. Just lay low, be a farmer. (laughs) Do we have a rule to live by for this week? Yeah. We always end our show with we a, always end a our rule, show with to, rule live to live by, by. Or, or sometimes a famous quote, something like that. What do we got? That, this was a good one. It's from Richard Bach. What the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. Mm. Hmm. So right when you think things may the, be ending, the caterpillar may turns into be, a butterfly. may only be the beginning. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's good. All caterpillars turn into butterflies. Yeah. And caterpillars are ugly. Yeah, sometimes the end. They're not pretty, the end, the butterflies are beautiful. Sometimes an ending to one thing is only the beginning of something else. Yeah, that's when you flourish and you grow yeah. and you learn. I like that. and I do, I do like that. I do feel like lo- that is a good analogy to life because a lot of times there's sad times in your life and you think something is changing or ending, and but mm-hmm. it, it, it turns out oh, yeah. even better. Yeah, that's what almost like when one door closes, another, another one, one opens. opens. Yeah. yeah, you just never want to. Uh-huh. Yeah, you never you never know what's going to happen. But yeah, what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. Hmm. I like it. I like it too. That's a good one. I like it too. So yeah. we ended up on a uh, we were talking about ignorant to tools <laughs> that yeah. we don't understand to uh-huh. the caterpillar turning into a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that worked out for some of these duelists. <laughs> I don't think, I think their end was the end. Well, the ones that there shot no each other life. really, you know, close, and then the other ones are like. Uh-huh. <laughs> I did like the thought, though, that when they was like the p- second, the understudies going, uh-huh. just put blanks in there. Yeah, that was my favorite part. Because <laughs> then if you missed, you missed, right? Oh, right. If you hit them, you, like you got if closer. you hit them, then <laughs> they didn't me. die. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, I think a blank could still leave a bruise if I understand that right, but yeah. don't you wouldn't know. die. So, no, don't care. Not going to be dueling anytime soon. Me either. Well, that is our show for today, Beth. Okay. Well, that was a good one. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we appreciate it. You can always find us on YouTube, By the Way with <laughs> Beth and Stacy, or like and follow our Facebook page, By the Way with Beth and Stacy. All right. That's we'll see it. see you next time. God Bye-bye. bless you. Have a great day.